This project was possible because of Insight's ongoing relationship with this neighborhood, artists, and the Milwaukee art community. Insight's in regular contact with the Gateway Business Improvement District, North Avenue Community Development Corporation, Property and Business Owners, Metcalf Park Residents Association, Gretchen Gruenwald here at the Boys and Girls Club, the police, politicians, the mailman, the Center Street Library, the, and the Business and Economics Academy on the street. Without these connections, today wouldn't have happened. The community came together to help. Chris Murphy, the artist, first approached Insight last year to do a project that involved ice. Insight said no to that concept, but urged Chris to keep in touch. He came to a meeting and presented his portfolio. Again, that ongoing contact made today happen. And Insight keeps connecting with the arts community via its website, via the Milwaukee Artist Resource Network, and relationships it's made with instructors at the Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design and at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Volunteers are here today helping to cast from Insight, from MyEd, from MARN, and from UWM. Again, this ongoing contact made today happen. And State Representative Tamara Grigsby isn't here today, but in June, she took a tour of the Insight Art on the Street, and she said, I wish there were 100 Insight projects. And maybe that will happen one day. It would be really great to see temporary public art all over this county. Thank you. I had actually been thinking about a project like this for quite some time, but with an entirely different focus on it. And it, because, you know, I, I listened to the radio every morning, and it was, it was like every other day there was another homicide, there was another shooting, and it was just starting to become one of these sort of background noise things where it's like, wait a minute, I've heard this before. I mean, how many is this really? And it got me thinking about it. And somehow that, you know, here it is, it's this, this event that's happening here, this tragedy that's going on in our community, but nobody really knows about it. Okay, so now I had a number, but what does that really mean? I'm a very three-dimensional person. Um, if you tell me 565, it's just kind of like it's more than five. <laughs> but if I see 565 things there, then somehow or another I understand it visually instantaneously. Um, and so I kind of was starting to think about the same thing. It's like, well, how do you get the number, which is now 94, 95, and make that real? And I remember coming across some photographs of some death masks that they had that were for personal house use in, um, in Rome, and that they used to have these backlit. And I thought that it was just this wonderful image. This is a way that you could remember somebody that was there. You would have this mask that represents this person with this light behind it, which philosophically makes a lot of sense, and visually it's very beautiful that the light is still within. But the community involvement in this um, was another facet that I hadn't quite thought about. Um, and when Insight uh, proposed the idea, it, all of a sudden it just made a lot of sense. Um, this is obviously an issue that people care very, very much about in this neighborhood. And in some ways, it's a way, I guess, to address it in a public manner. And as well, too, just being able to work with, uh, with the kids and the, the volunteers here, it's, just, it's been really wonderful. Um, the response has been really great, very positive, and um, I'm pretty thrilled. I thought it was cool to be like a part of something that that means a lot to like mm -hmm. people. And seeing all the moms come in that have had that experience happen to them and kept being able to cast their faces and like hearing their stories, this is really happening around the area. Maybe not to me firsthand, but all these women here, it is like real. I was kind of nervous at first because I've never ever like yeah, done same, anything same. like that. But, you know, you start to get more comfortable with it. And then you can start to joke with the people as you do it and like... One small idea could just like grow and grow and touch other people. My name is Gretchen Grunewald and I am the program coordinator for arts and cultural education here at the Fitzsimmons Boys and Girls Club. 
and today um, I'm doing a project with um, artist Chris Johnson for Insight. I have volunteered my space and the kids that I work with every day um, for this project and it's going very well. The relevance of this piece of art is um, to show people about gun violence that goes on in this community. Um, and I know that my members um, definitely feel this emotionally and um, they express that in a lot of ways through their art that they do with me at times. I am Lauren Bandari, um, Publicity Manager uh, with Insight and um, tonight's project has been phenomenal. Um, we're doing the face casting for Koros, which is a public art piece, temporary public art piece going up at 3611 West North Avenue. This piece um, is different than what we have done before. Um, we always have the idea to create public art pieces that spark dialogue. Um, that's why we've put a discussion board on our website. That's why we have hosted public art forums and we will again uh, for this round of art. But this piece elevates that discussion to such a personal level. We're dealing um, with a subject of people killed by gunshots in Milwaukee in 2007. And that has, of course, um, involved the community in such a different way. Again, this uh, participation tonight for the face casting, there's um, mothers from uh, Mothers Against Gun Violence, Million Mom March, um, and also I believe it's uh, Communities Against Homicide are all here tonight. Um, I sat around in a circle where the mothers, um, and it wasn't only mothers, there were men there as well, um, and also friends of victims killed by gunshots, and they told their stories tonight, and I feel, um, I just felt connected to the community, connected to these people in another way. Um, I could feel the grief, but they also were so, um, they felt just a moment healing of having the olive oil, having the surgical tape on their face, um, maybe a moment of thinking of who had died. I am the Wisconsin president of Million Mom March and founder and chair of Mothers Against Gun Violence. I founded uh, Mothers Against Gun Violence and got involved with Million Mom March after my only son, Kirk Bickham Jr. and his two friends, Deshaun Hall and Carl Wimbush, were killed by a felon with a gun. Um, I had obtained an ATF report and uh, it appeared that the registered owner sold the gun to the felon that killed my son and his two friends. Um, and I requested a bill, the Responsible Gun Ownership Bill, SB 104, that will require criminal background checks for private citizen gun sales. This bill will uh, lower felons and children's access to guns. Um, for Milwaukee County alone, over 80% of guns that are recovered in criminal activity have been transferred at least once. This is how children and felons are getting guns. For the state of Wisconsin, 90% of Wisconsin residents support criminal background checks. And um, Wisconsin anti-violent anti effort did the survey. If we are successful in reaching that 90%, the Responsible Gun Ownership Bill will become a law. And it's sponsored by State Senator Spencer Collins. This piece sparks dialogue, of course, and should spark dialogue about solutions of what to do. But it also will take a moment of sitting back and thinking about what has happened, and I'm, I just feel honored to be part of this project.